Plastic, plastic, plastic. We see them everywhere and we use them all the time. But where do they end up? We see like a lot, the, the time is about 100 tons. So can you imagine two days? We, we, we're really suffering a lot of uh, this uh, big problem from plastic waste. Malaysia, where the world sends its trash. That's the reputation given to our country for being the top plastic polluter in the world. In this episode of The Society, with me, Farhana, we will talk about plastics and how it affects our lives. Plastic is used in almost all our products from our food takeouts, toiletries, and even medicine packaging. By 2015, humans have generated over 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic. This is equivalent to 80 million blue whales or 1 billion elephants. Out of this amount, 6.3 billion metric tons end up as waste. And shockingly, only 9% of this plastic waste is recycled, while close to 80% end up in landfill or natural environment. But the question remains, how dangerous can plastic be? For the past decade, China has been the main importer of plastic waste across the globe. In 2012, Greenpeace reports that up to 56% of global exported plastic waste ended up in China, reaching a peak of almost 9 million tonnes a year. But in 2017, China bans import of foreign waste in an effort to clear its country of pollution. This resulted in many countries scrambling to find a new place to dump its waste. The full wrath of plastic pollution was felt when imported plastic started making its way to Jinjarum, a small town in the state of Selangor. Uh, here is uh, Siri Jiring. Um, this location been dumped uh, 100 tons of uh, plastic waste and uh, uh, it was burned uh, the uh, 2nd of February, uh, burned for two days. Yeah, it happened every way. In, 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 in my village, every, every day or every week we can hear, oh, there's a dumping, there's dumping, there's a burning. What happened to the surrounding when this thing was burned? Oh, when it happened, uh, I saw the white smoke just terrible and um, we, we cannot stand the smell and uh, those uh, these uh, toxic gas are uh, been uh, spread to uh, Jinjarong, which have a uh, 30,000 residents, and we found that the residents fell sick for about months. They have a uh, respiratory problem, asthma, heart breathing, uh, susanatido, uh, then uh, virus infection. Other yang kena masuk hospital berapa kali? Kalau macam saya, saya coughing for one month. Susah nak semua. Sebab kalau saya ada ada datang sa di sini, mm -hmm. saya rasa sepatu. Saya memang rasa badan sangat susah. Saya tak boleh tidur uh, baik. Saya uh, pun susah ada selalu kedua chest pain. Mm -hmm. Ah, macam sekarang saya masih ada bau yang saya yeah, uh, sangat tu. Yang rasa smalit, actually. yes yes smalit, the, yeah. Ah, the PVC right? Ah, plastic right? Ah, oh, banyak teruk lah. So you see all of this. Yeah, teruk. All of this is all There's plastic no, waste. How how deep does it go? Ah, uh, I heard it's about seven meter. Seven meter deep. Oh. And it's not just the, this is not the only spot, lah. Not the oh. only spot. Not the only. We just nearby us. Uh, this is we know, but but we know that actually a lot of place also facing this problem, especially those uh, kampung area that they thought kampung people don't know about. You know this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, ways uh, they thought is tana. Malaysia has become the top destination for many developed nations to dispose of their waste after the China ban. According to the United States federal data, Malaysia has imported more than 192,000 metric tons in the first 10 months of 2018, a 132% jump from the year before. This plastic waste recycling industry is a uh, it can generate revenue for the country and also cost is a uh, about like 30 billion ringgit industry. So According to the Malaysian government, they will still import clean plastic, clean industrial plastic that can be recycled. But at, so the government said they will ban the, all these dirty plastic waste. And this mostly the dirty plastic means like the municipal plastic waste or single-use plastic. Especially like the snack, the junk foods, 
usually we will, I mean, we just like what we call plastic pakai buang, single use plastic. Hmm. All plastic uh, waste, this is a crushed crush plastic. Mungkin is the reject there, this is, is unrecyclable. Tak boleh recycle. Ini yang sudah terbakar. It's very toxic actually. This this is going to affect everybody's health because this is air pollution. We don't have for this a good habit that to reduce use of plastic or to properly dispose the plastic or handle to manage the plastic. Okay, people still take granted from government. You know, oh, other other uh, uh, sampah collection we buang as much as we can. We use as much as we can. This is very wrong. Ban of single-use plastic is a correct policy, but but the problem is uh, the implementation. Can takkan ada hanya call for ban for plastic, but actually no action. Ah, people now still using plastic, single-use plastic still a lot, and a lot of overpackaging product. I think government should look into this. Talk to the those uh, uh, businessmen, talk to the factory. They should reduce unnecessary plastic packaging. I will say that not all the plastic can be recycled. If the past, if all the plastic can be recycled, why just only nine percent? I mean, globally, not not just Malaysia. Mm. Because according to I will say the the governments, the plastic and and the industry, the plastic can be recycled if they're like separate and segregated properly. But to recycle plastic, we need to wash it and to melt it. To wash and melt it, you need a I mean good mechanism to do it. So if some of the some people like the illegal plastic recycle, if they didn't follow the like regulations, actually they also con they will contribute more pollution, especially air pollution. Jadi kita tak boleh duduk sana lama sebab you can feel. Saya sudah rasa headache. Sudah pening kepala duduk sana Susah lama. Susah nafas. Saya uh. pun rasa chest pain. Hmm. Ini bau memang sangat racun dan kesan masih ada dan penurut-penurut yang di sektor ini mereka actually uh, pun rasa sangat susah mereka nak pindah tapi nak pindah bagaimana kan ini bukan yang senang yang nak pindah satu rumah mereka pun nangis pun tak, pun, tak ada guna kan dan sekarang waste uh, di sana itu begitu saja tapi actually sana dan komiti uh, saya actually dulu sangat cantik dan kami suka keluar tapi sekarang keluar kan udah ada cukup teruk macam mana so dan ada orang yang dia batuk sampai dia keluar darah tau kerana dia punya information susah nak sembuh banyak kali antibiotik pun tak boleh sembuh hmm. ha, so macam mana kalau macam ni macam mana boleh boleh duduk damai sekarang tiap-tiap bulan hmm. anak jatuh sakit dah ataupun satu rumah lima orang tiga orang jatuh sakit dah hmm. saya macam sudah henti dan tengok kalau udah ada mama macam ni tiap-tiap hari macam nak anak boleh belajar macam nak kesihatan boleh jaga dan orang sana nangis dah pindah pindah mana betul dan uh, sekarang kan uh, keluarga di komuniti saya satu bulan untuk medication kan satu bulan 200 300 kerana bagi anak patuh kena pergi dekat klinik kan kena pergi uh, Uh, ada hospital kawan mungkin kena tunggu so, jadi biasa yang pergi klinik so, satu kali seratus ringgit satu dua puluh ringgit so ada ada keluarga mungkin satu keluarga tiga orang tiga anak semua, semua, semua kena pergi hospital atau While the government has shut down most of the illegal factories operating in the area, the plastic recycling industry still remains a lucrative business in Malaysia. I visit a local plastic recycling factory to understand how they operate. So here we do uh, our part is to we collect all those recycling items and we sort it out and as per the uh, guidelines so there will be no artificial demand for any plastic products. The companies who have no license at all they they are not having any ultimate goal or they do not have any SOP, alright. So uh, their main motive is only to make profit. They will not follow the government procedures, things are being recycled and the leftover items, how, what to do, where to dump it. And those plastics are considered uh, highly toxic, have to be sent to the quality alarm in Jambahar. So these are the guidelines we have to follow. At Tanam Industries in Jambahar, plastic is first segregated and classified based on their density. Plastic is then cut into small flakes to later be melted, molded, 
palletized and packed according to clients' requirements. We are depending on plastics uh, as a main role for packaging industries. So just for business sake, we can say that we can encourage plastics. Uh, personally, if you ask me, I would not encourage plastics to be in the packaging industries because of its potential danger. And the damage caused from plastic alone is far from little. Over 8 million metric tons of plastic end up in our oceans, killing up to 100,000 marine life each year. Plastic has also made its way into our food. Small pieces of plastics called microplastic consumed by marine life, then later eaten by us. So with the eminent danger that plastic poses, what can be the solution to our plastic problem? Kalau lama kelamaan, what will happen to, to the country? We will have a more cancer patient. Because uh, masalah udah ada, tak boleh dikawal kerana semua orang kena menafas, tak boleh berhentikan. Ya. Dan kalau kami sendiri sebagai anak Malaysia, kami tak keluarkan langkah untuk macam protect environment, so what will happen to our next generation? Sampah, masalah sampah sangat besar. Reduce is the number one we should do. Secondly, segregation of waste is very important. Apa yang boleh pakai lagi, pakai lagi. Okay? Apa yang tak boleh pakai lagi, sekiranya besok recyclable and non-recyclable. Minimize recyclable. Plastic uh, recycling itself cannot fix the pollution fast enough. And this is not just a Malaysia problem or US problem or Japan's problem. It's a global problem that we need to solve together. To solve it, we actually have to cut it from the, the source, which is, I mean, producing, plastic producing industry. We have to ask, I mean, government and global brand especially the fast-moving consumer goods, they have the resource, they have to, they have, the, they have the resources that should reduce and set clear reductions to reduce single-use plastic. Now we always talk about like three R, reduce, reuse and recycles. We need to think about reduce first. If we cannot reduce, we have to reuse. Recycle should be the last solution. Now this, uh, like this plastic waste problem, uh, it shows that uh, plastic recycling itself alone cannot fix the uh, past, uh, plastic pollution fast enough. It shows some people might like, especially in the uh, developed country, the consumer might think that uh, okay, when I throw the rubbish into a uh, recycle bin, I expect someone will recycle for me. But actually, no. This is the result. So if uh, if all the plastic waste can be can be recycled, why it end up in this uh, in this area? That's why the, this is the problem that created by us and we are actually facing all this disaster. If we don't fix the plastic pollution fast enough, actually we, are, we will face more disaster in the future. It's time for all of us to wake up and realise that there's no planet B. We should all work towards reducing our plastic consumption and manage our waste better for a cleaner and healthier Malaysia. This is me, Farhana. See you next time.